Hello guys, and welcome to my channel. Due to YouTube copyright infringement, we only use one picture with voiceover. Thank you for understanding. If you love history and biographies, please leave a like and a sub. Let's start the video. Linus Pauling, born February 28, 1901, Portland, Oregon, U.S., died August 19, 1994. Big Sur, California, American theoretical physical chemist who became the only person to have won two unshared Nobel Prizes. His first prize, 1954, was awarded for research into the nature of the chemical bond and its use in elucidating molecular structure, the second. 1962 recognized his efforts to ban the testing of nuclear weapons. Pauling was the first of three children and the only son of Herman Pauling, a pharmacist, and Lucy Isabel, darling, Pauling, a pharmacist's daughter. After his early education in Condon and Portland, Oregon, he attended Oregon Agricultural College, now Oregon State University, where he met Ava Helen Miller, who would later become his wife and where he received his Bachelor of Science degree in Chemical Engineering summa cum laude in 1922. He then attended the California Institute of Technology, Caltech, where Roscoe G. Dickinson showed him how to determine the structures of crystals using X-rays. He received his PhD in 1925 for a dissertation derived from his crystal structure papers. Following a brief period as a National Research Fellow, he received a Guggenheim Fellowship to study quantum mechanics in Europe. He spent most of the 18 months at Arnold Sommerfeld's Institute for Theoretical Physics in Munich, Germany. After completing postdoctoral studies, Pauling returned to Caltech in 1927. There he began a long career of teaching and research. Analyzing chemical structure became the central theme of his scientific work. By using the technique of X-ray diffraction, he determined the three-dimensional arrangement of atoms in several important silicate and sulfide minerals. In 1930, during a trip to Germany, Pauling learned about electron diffraction, and upon his return to California, he used this technique of scattering electrons from the nuclei of molecules to determine the structures of some important substances. This structural knowledge assisted him in developing an electronegativity scale in which he assigned a number representing a particular atom's power of attracting electrons in a covalent bond. To complement the experimental tool that X ray analysis provided for exploring molecular structure, Pauling turned to quantum mechanics as a theoretical tool. For example, he used quantum mechanics to determine the equivalent strength in each of the four bonds surrounding the carbon atom. He developed a valence bond theory in which he proposed that a molecule could be described by an intermediate structure that was a resonance combination, or hybrid, of other structures. His book The Nature of the Chemical Bond and the Structure of Molecules and Crystals, 1939 provided a unified summary of his vision of structural chemistry. The arrival of the geneticist Thomas Hunt Morgan at Caltech in the late 1920s stimulated Pauling's interest in biological molecules, and by the mid-1930s he was performing successful magnetic studies on the protein hemoglobin. He developed further interests in protein and, together with biochemist Alfred Mears Kai, Pauling published a paper in 1936 on general protein structure. In this work the authors explained that protein molecules naturally coiled into specific configurations but became denatured, uncoiled, and assumed some random form once certain weak bonds were broken. On one of his trips to visit Mearsky in New York, Pauling met Carl Landsteiner, the discoverer of blood types, who became his guide into the field of immunochemistry. Pauling was fascinated by the specificity of antibody-antigen reactions, and he later developed a theory that accounted for this specificity through a unique folding of the antibody's polypeptide chain. World War II interrupted this theoretical work, and Pauling's focus shifted to more practical problems, including the preparation of an artificial substitute for blood serum useful to wounded soldiers, and an oxygen detector useful in submarines and airplanes. J. A. Robert Oppenheimer asked Pauling to head the chemistry section of the Manhattan Project, 
but his suffering from glomerulonephrites, inflammation of the glomerular region of the kidney, prevented him from accepting this offer. For his outstanding services during the war, Pauling was later awarded the Presidential Medal for Merit. While collaborating on a report about post-war American science, Pauling became interested in the study of sickle cell anemia. He perceived that the sickling of cells noted in this disease might be caused by a genetic mutation in the globin portion of the blood cell's hemoglobin. In 1949 he and his co-workers published a paper identifying the particular defect in hemoglobin structure that was responsible for sickle cell anemia, which thereby made this disorder the first molecular disease to be discovered. At that time, Pauling's article on the periodic law appeared in the 14th edition of Encyclopedia Britannica. While serving as a visiting professor at the University of Oxford in 1948, Pauling returned to a problem that had intrigued him in the late 1930s, the three-dimensional structure of proteins. By folding a paper on which he had drawn a chain of linked amino acids, he discovered a cylindrical coil-like configuration, later called the alpha helix. The most significant aspect of Pauling's structure was its determination of the number of amino acids per turn of the helix. During this same period he became interested in deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA. And early in 1953 he and protein crystallographer Robert Corey published their version of DNA structure, three strands twisted around each other in rope-like fashion. Shortly thereafter James Watson and Francis Crick published DNA's correct structure, a double helix. Pauling's efforts to modify his postulated structure had been hampered by poor X-ray photographs of DNA, and by his lack of understanding of this molecule's wet and dry forms. In 1952 he failed to visit Rosalind Franklin, working in Maurice Wilkins's laboratory at King's College, London, and consequently did not see her X-ray pictures of DNA. Franklin's pictures proved to be the linchpin in allowing Watson and Crick to elucidate the actual structure. Nevertheless, Pauling was awarded the 1954 Nobel Prize for Chemistry for his research into the nature of the chemical bond and its application to the elucidation of the structure of complex substances. During the 1950s Pauling and his wife became well known to the public through their crusade to stop the atmospheric testing of nuclear weapons. In 1958, they presented an appeal for a test ban to the United Nations in the form of a document signed by 9,230. Five scientists from 44 countries. Pauling's sentiments were also promulgated through his book No More War. 1958, a passionate analysis of the implications of nuclear war for humanity. In 1960 he was called upon to defend his actions regarding a test ban before a congressional subcommittee. By refusing to reveal the names of those who had helped him collect signatures, he risked going to jail a stand initially condemned but later widely admired. His work on behalf of world peace was recognized with the 1962 Nobel Prize for Peace awarded on October 10, 1963, the date that the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty went into effect. See the video clip from his acceptance speech. Pauling's Peace Prize generated such antagonism from Caltech administrators that he left the institute in 1963. He became a staff member at the Center for the Study of Democratic Institutions in Santa Barbara, California, where his humanitarian work was encouraged. Although he was able to develop a new model of the atomic nucleus while working at the center, his desire to perform more experimental research led him to a research professorship at the University of California in San Diego in 1967. There he published a paper on orthomolecular psychiatry that explained how mental health could be achieved by manipulating substances normally present in the body. Two years later he accepted a post at Stanford University, where he worked until 1972. While at San Diego and Stanford, Pauling's scientific interest centered on a particular molecule, ascorbic acid, vitamin C. He examined the published reports about this vitamin and concluded that, when taken in large enough quantities, megadoses, it would help the body fight off colds and other diseases. 
The outcome of his research was the book Vitamin C and the Common Cold, 1970, which became a bestseller. Pauling's interest in vitamin C in particular and orthomolecular medicine in general led, in 1973, to his founding an institute that eventually bore his name, the Linus Pauling Institute of Science and Medicine. During his tenure at this institute, he became embroiled in controversies about the relative benefits and risks of ingesting megadoses of various vitamins. The controversy intensified when he advocated vitamin C's usefulness in the treatment of cancer. Pauling and his collaborator, the Scottish physician Ewan Cameron, published their views in Cancer and Vitamin C, 1979. Their ideas were subjected to experimental animal studies funded by the Institute. While these studies supported their ideas, investigations at the Mayo Clinic involving human cancer patients did not corroborate Pauling's results. Although he continued to receive recognition for his earlier accomplishments, Pauling's later work provoked considerable skepticism and controversy. His cluster model of the atomic nucleus was rejected by physicists. His interpretation of the newly discovered quasicrystals received little support and his ideas on vitamin C were rejected by the medical establishment. In an effort to raise money to support his increasingly troubled institute, Pauling published How to Live Longer and Feel Better, 1986, but the book failed to become the success that he and his associates had anticipated. Both Pauling and his wife developed cancer. Ava Helen Pauling died of stomach cancer in 1981. Ten years later Pauling discovered that he had prostate cancer. Although he underwent surgery and other treatments, the cancer eventually spread to his liver. He died at his ranch on the Big Sur coast of California.